Welcome to my channel. I'm the Dark Lord of Optics, and what I bring you here is a thinking man's take on guns and optics with occasional forays into politics. Thank you for being here. So what we're looking at today is the GRS Sporter stock, uh, hailing all the way from Norway. And since it's a nice European stock, I decided to uh, get one inletted for a European action. In this case, this is an, uh, a very, very accurate 22. This is an Anschutz 1712, uh, 22 long rifle barreled action that I got my hands on, and then uh, I got my hands on a stock, mated them together. I did not glass bed it. Uh, I probably should, but the thing is uh, shooting so well that I'm a little bit worried about uh, screwing it up. Why GRS stock? A lot of the things you guys see me shooting with really are uh, chassis type stocks of all sorts and I really really like those that have a lot to offer. I do like wooden furniture on guns but I'm always a little bit concerned about bagging it up etc and this looked like an interesting compromise. It was a very sturdy looking laminate with a unusual, couple of unusual features and it had adjustable buttstock and adjustable cheek piece which is really uh, what I wanted uh, to see. The, well, let's, since I got uh, to the adjustable part, let's just go through the stock and kind of talk uh, a little bit about the features and why I think this is such an interesting design. Uh, you can see two buttons here. This one, if you press it, you can change the length of pull. Uh, they also sell adapter uh, plates, I believe, where you can you know, raise it up a little bit or not. I didn't need that. I usually should have just slightly extended. And the other button does the same thing for the cheek piece. It's spring loaded, you just press it in and you can set it to uh, whatever you want. You can even uh, do so with your head on it so you can easily figure out where you need to be and be golden. The most interesting part to me is in the way they did the grip. When I first got the stock, I was cautiously pessimistic. And I was pessimistic because because of the finger grooves. I, to date, have not seen a stock with finger grooves that actually fit my hand. And I don't have a particular unusual hand, you know, there's nothing terribly misshapen, this is not more than usual uh, with my hands. This one is exceptionally comfortable. Um, and it really reminds me in terms of some of the angles and curves, the uh, Finnish stock, uh, Finnish from Finland, on my Mosin 2876 that I really like, that's a kind of a biathlon style stock. This one in terms of some of the curves is a little bit similar. And one of the things this does really well that I really like, that I kind of learned to like on the 2876, is that it is decidedly a right-handed stock. And the grip, and here's the picture that shows you this, the grip is offset to the side. I'm going to try to rotate this your way, so maybe you can see in the video, but I have a picture. See how far? to the right this grip is offset that makes a big difference in terms of comfort because it moves your moves your hand to the right a little bit for right-handed shooter and the way my finger falls you know action open no magazine the way my finger falls on the trigger is just perfect i don't i'm not inclined to squeeze anything very hard there's a scalloped area for the thumb that is just just right Okay, I'm not um, driven to try to squeeze, to control anything, etc. I just put my hand on there with very mild pressure. My finger is in a perfect position for the trigger. The trigger is adjustable, it can be moved front and back a little bit. I messed with it a little bit, and should does help. But honestly, I messed with it because I can, I didn't need to. I pulled the uh, action, put it into the stock. Once again, I did not glass bed it. At some point, I'll get brave enough to try that. And um, it was just perfect. It is easily one of the most comfortable grips and the best finger positions I have had uh, yet. Okay. Uh, moving on down, this is just a regular uh, laminated stock. Uh, let me get it out of the clamp. There is a little bit of a slope here, which works really, really well if I shoot you off of bags by moving slightly forward or slightly upwards. So you can do very, very small and gradual adjustments to your point of aim without doing anything in the back. You just go a little bit forward and it rides up a little bit in the back and starts going up or down. It works well. There's a uh, sling swivel stud on the left side of the stock. And another one up front, 
uh, where I put a small Picatinny rail because I use uh, Picatinny clamp bipods. Okay. The overall weight of the stock is right around three pounds. Uh, I didn't wait, that's what it's listed, what it kind of feels like, and they're calling it Sporcher because you can do a lot of different things with it. It's sort of there, if you wish, a general purpose stock. You can do precision with it, that's where the adjustable stuff comes in, the really, really comfortable grip. But I've also spent some time shooting it offhand, and as a walking varminter, this thing is also wonderful. Um, just a nice general purpose uh, precision varmint type uh, stock and for the 22 it's just super up. now given that I have it in a caliber it essentially doesn't have any recoil I have not had a chance to test it under recoil so keep that in mind but um, I would not anticipate any issues because I've had some similar looking stocks on proper recoiling rifles uh, without any issues the uh, barrel channel here, I think it's for varmint type barrel. Um, this particular one is not varmint, it's kind of a medium weight barrel. It's nicely free floated, there is nothing uh, touching anywhere I looked. I have not seen anything shift in terms of the machining quality. You can tell that the barrel is really nicely centered in the barrel channel. There is a you know, significant gap because it can accommodate a larger barrel. I'm not bothered by it. If you are, okay, maybe you need a bigger barrel, don't know. But once again, I can honestly tell you that I'm quite impressed. Probably the nicest wood laminate stock I've seen to date. But the part that really brought it home for me is the way they did the grip. There are a lot of stocks with adjustable combs, adjustable butt plates. They did a nice job with it. I think this is a Liat's Leap Saver. A butt pad. So if there was recoil, this would probably really help. What really, really impressed me is the way they configured the grip. It's cast to the side, both offset and the angle changed. And if when I am shooting off of the bench or prone, the way it positions my hand, there is no stress on the wrist at all. And the finger goes on the trigger in just the perfect spot. Just really, really uh, a nice design. That's it. What else? There's really not that much else. I was trying to find something to complain about. I got nothing. I guess I would probably prefer it if they had some sort of unshot rail uh, built into the stock or something that would make it a little bit easier to add an arc plate to it. I might actually, there is some space here where the clamp is. I might add an arc plate to make uh, shooting off of the uh, tripod a little bit easier, but honestly, the little Picatinny adapter thingy uh, does fine uh, with a bipod. And for shooting off the tripod, I have several clamps. This one is from Sunway Photo. It's Sunway Photo tripod. And um, it works really, really well. Um, I just got this tripod in to play with it a little bit. And I haven't tried anything with strong recoil on it yet. But for the 22, with this clamp, it's perfect. It's rubberized, so it doesn't damage the stock and it's you know the balance point of the stock is right under the magazine so for shooting offhand it's very good it, despite the fact that uh, the clamp is holding it well in front of uh, the balance point it is still quite steady it's not it's not a you know 10 pound precision tripod there's a little bit of wobble but it is very very uh, controllable uh, if you have not shot uh, shot with anshots uh, 22s before you really should do keep in mind uh, that I've been messing a little bit with the Element Nexus 5 to 20 stock, trying to see you know if I can get any effect on accuracy with uneven tightening of the action screw, something like that. I could not detect much, if anything at all. There's a little bit, but not much. Uh, there is an integral uh, rimfire, was it 11 millimeter, whatever it is, dovetail. That's what I'm using so far. I have a different rimfire that this scope is going to go onto, and I'm probably going to put a Picatinny rail here with a slope, with a march scope and see how it does it uh, long range and um, with this stock shooting far is easy there's just something inherently comfortable about the feel of wood and the fact that i can very easily adjust it perfectly for me and once again i keep on coming back to this this grip is just uh, amazing really amazing Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. I really do appreciate your time.
if you have any questions or if you have experience with JRS stocks and you disagree with me, uh, please put something in a comment. I really do appreciate it. Thank you.